Hi, I'm Elizabeth Stolga and I'm the Covenants Manager for Brambleton Community Association and this is Keeping Brambleton Beautiful. In this segment we're going to be discussing topics with various experts in different fields about subject matters that I think are pertinent to Brambleton residents in an effort to keep our houses looking beautiful and keep our property values high. In today's segment we have with us Sam Allaire from the Loudoun County Master Gardeners Association. Welcome Sam. Welcome. Thank you so Great much for joining here. me. Thank you. Okay, and Sam, I have a question. What is the Master Gardeners Association? Well, the Loudoun County Master Gardeners are an outreach of the Virginia Cooperative Extension Service, which is part of Virginia Tech and Virginia State University. We promote safe and sustainable horticultural practices throughout the state. Oh. And we're all volunteers. Oh, you're all volunteers, so you don't get paid by the university? Absolutely not. We want to help our community, and we want to help everyone stay green and stay healthy. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, well, today I think Brambleton residents are interested in how to start taking care of their lawns and prepping them for spring. Can you help us out with that? Absolutely. One of the things we want to talk about is how, by reducing pollutants from reaching the Chesapeake Bay, we can have clean waterways and bays in our area. And to do that, we need to put the right amount of fertilizer on our lawn only when necessary and reduce other contaminants like pesticides etc. In the spring is the best time for us to go ahead and control weeds. Wow, how do we go about doing that? Well, the best thing to remember is that you can use a crabgrass preventer because those are annual seeds that come up every spring and the time to apply your pre-emergent is when the forsythia blooms. If you follow up approximately four weeks later, you should be able to control those weeds after only one or two years. Wonderful. So we have to do it again, a second time. A so second application will help you to control them because the first application is only going to last for approximately four to six weeks as the rain will wash away this barrier that you've put down. Wow, okay, so we have to do it again in four weeks. What else should we be thinking about? Well, what you should be thinking about also is your mowing height. When you mow your grass in this area, we find that most people use a tall fescue because we're in the northern Piedmont area, and that works best. So the best way to maintain this is by keeping the height of your grass at approximately three inches. Don't mow it too short because you'll allow weeds to overtake your grass, which is what you don't want to do. So keep your grass height mowed to three inches, and that will be wonderful for the lawn and keep it healthy. When it reaches four inches, make sure you mow it. And you may have to do this more often when it's raining out because that will promote the grass to grow faster. So you may end up mowing more than once a week if needed. Wow, so I could be mowing as often as every five days during the rainy season. That's absolutely correct. Or perhaps sometimes it'll be a, longer, a little bit longer if it doesn't go over four inches. Wonderful. Well, in Brambleton, in our community association's government documents, we don't allow grass to grow any higher than six inches at the absolute maximum. And we do inspections on that all the time. And now I know why it's so important that we keep our grass at a perfect height. Well, that's wonderful. And that will promote good grass growth and keep your lawn healthy. By keeping it healthy, again, we're going to reduce those contaminants from water, reaching our waterways. Now, how do we know which kind of fertilizer to use for our lawn? Well, what we want to do is use only enough fertilizer as necessary, and the best way to do that is to have your lawn tested. Currently, the Virginia Cooperative Extension Service has a program called Grassroots, and we actually send out one of our Master Gardener volunteers to your lawn and they will take a soil sample and submit it to the labs down at Virginia Tech. When the results come back, the, we'll take that analysis and develop an actual written nutrient management plan specifically for your lawn. And it'll give you the times to fertilize and, and just how much to fertilize and whether or not you need a lime application or not. Wow, but Sam, that sounds expensive. I don't know if I can afford that. Absolutely not. The soil test itself is only $10 for the lab work and we only charge $20 over all, which includes that lab work. You're kidding, so I can get my soil tested by Loudoun County Master Gardeners and I can have an analysis sent back to me in writing for only $20? Absolutely correct. And that, that sounds will fabulous. Help. That will help you to make sure that you don't apply too much fertilizer to your lawn and it'll help us save the bay. What happens when we apply too much fertilizer to the lawn? Where does it go? Does it, is it more better? 
when we apply too much fertilizer, the runoff will enter our streams and creeks and run down to Chesapeake Bay, causing algae blooms and other problems with our bay. And that will deprive the bay and other estuaries of oxygen. And therefore, we lose plants and aquatic vegetation and invertebrates. So in an effort to make our lawns green and beautiful, we could be harming the waterways if we don't do it properly. That's absolutely correct. The right amount is the correct amount. Un not fertilizing your lawn at all, if it needs it, is also promotes contaminants from entering the Chesapeake Bay. Wow. So it has to be the right amount. That's the right answer is the right amount of fertilizer. It's the right amount of fertilizer at the right time because timing is so important. What is the best time to fertilize? The best time to fertilize is in the fall because that's when the plant is storing nutrients in its root system and you want your roots to develop so the following year those roots are down there picking up nutrients and sending up to the green blades of grass that are growing and keeping them green. If you over fertilize, especially in the spring, you will tend to have that new growth come up too quickly and then when the hot weather comes along, it will burn it up. Oh wow, that's happened to my lawn before, especially in Virginia. It gets really hot in July. Absolutely, so that's why the proper mowing height along with knowing how much water to apply to your lawn is so helpful. The rule is one inch of water per week. So we suggest you use a small rain gauge and measure how much rain you got in that week. So if you only got a half an inch of rain that week, you'd want to go ahead and supplement that. Oh, that's fabulous. And when's the best time of day to water? The best time to water is in the early morning hours before the sun comes up. This way the grass will dry off and will, won't get fungal diseases, which are a problem within your lawn. By doing it early, you avoid those problems. Plus, you conserve the water because it goes directly into the ground and helps to promote the roots and the growth of your lawn. Wow, so I don't do it at night. Absolutely not. If you do it at night, what will happen is it will stay wet all night and promote fungal growth out on your lawn. Oh, I don't want that. Those little mushrooms that come up. That's one of the reasons we don't recommend uh, applying water at night. Okay, well then I guess I'll have to get up early in the morning and, and do it before I go to work instead of after then. Well, that's good because then you'll enjoy a good, healthy lawn. So we can get these soil tests by calling Loudoun County Master Gardeners Association. And I would imagine we could call and ask questions if we have them, correct? Absolutely. We run a help desk every weekday morning from 9 to 12 in Leesburg, Virginia, and volunteers are there to always answer your questions or schedule a grassroot soil test for you. We're also at the clinics on weekends. So look for our announcements when our clinics are to be held. We hold them out in the community at three locations every Saturday morning from 8 to 12. Oh, that's wonderful. So we can get even more information. Absolutely. We're here to help you and promote safe and sustainable horticultural practices. Well, thank you. And thanks for helping Brambleton keep Brambleton beautiful. We want to help you to have a great community. Wonderful. Well, we look forward to some really good looking lawns this spring. Great. Thank you for partnering with us. Thanks so much, Sam. Well, that's this segment of Keeping Brambleton Beautiful. And be looking for other segments of Keeping Brambleton Beautiful where we talk with other experts in their fields on subjects that will help us all keep our lawns and our homes beautiful and our property values high. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.